वेलकम टू डायरेक्टर स्पॉटलाइट एंड दिस इज हिरायामा एंड आई एम महेश योर होस्ट एंड एन एस्पायरिंग फिल्म मेकर सिंस लास्ट कपल ऑफ डेज आई हैव बीन इन द यूफोरिया ऑफ परफेक्ट डेज ए जैपनीज लैंग्वेज फिल्म डिरेक्टेड बाय विम वेंडर्स यू माइट नो हिम फॉर इज फिल्म लाइक पैरिस टेक्सस एंड विंग्स ऑफ डिजायर The experience that I have after watching this movie is not something that I can put it in words. It is profound to say the least. I feel everyone who saw the film must have sat down for a moment, may have seen the world around and might have observed something new which were always there yet invisible. I mean, at least that's what happened with me. So when a movie has such a deep impact on me as a person, the filmmaker inside who is student of this craft is obviously curious and excited to understand that how exactly this magic happens usually when i have to study a movie i watch interviews of the filmmaker to understand their perspective and then rewatch the movie in order to analyze the decision made by filmmaker to protect his intent and vision of the story but this time the things were bit tricky because you know when you understand the trick behind the magic fade away so i only rewatched that film once that too doesn't analyze much only paid more attention while watching it and i does understand the intent and vision of the filmmaker and how he achieved it without spoiling the magic of the story so in this video as always i am going to give you the insight into the filmmaking of perfect days while trying my best to not spoil your intimate relationship with it and also i would encourage you to watch this video till end so that it would reach a wider audience in one of old interviews of film vendors he said that sometimes a simple photograph is more complex than an entire movie A photograph which may seem like a frozen moment in time is actually tells about its relation with time what's in the frame and what's not how the shot is composed this thing tells about the photographer as if a photo is an inverted eye into its creator's mind beside a photo doesn't have a narrative and is highly interpretive so sometimes not always but sometimes a simple photograph is more complex than an entire narrative movie In a movie, filmmaker is in slave of the narrative. His every decision is based on whether it's complement the intent of the narrative or not. And the great filmmakers always search best to the intent, but by seeing it from the photographer's perspective, it might feel limiting. And Wim Wenders is also a photographer that explains why Perfect Days is the way it is. The movie doesn't have a strict narrative. It just puts the audience on a journey alongside Hirayama. offering the world from the perspective of him in recent days i heard it somewhere that the most beautiful thing about art is that it has an ability to immerse you into someone else's perspective it is about empathy a photographer's photo painter's painting writer's novel or a filmmaker's movie is a artist's perspective of looking towards the world when one immerses oneself into the art one for a brief moment looks at the world from their eyes so hirayama is a wim wenders way of looking towards the things around us he wanted audience to have an alternate perspective of the ordinary stuff that happened around us in day to day life in the movie we follow hirayama as he navigates through his life he wakes up every day with the sound of sweeping he sprays water to his lovely plants get ready and has that smile every single day he is toilet cleaner and perform his work wholeheartedly whenever he gets time he sees trees he sees things that are invisible for others like the homeless man wandering on streets yet movie doesn't show that he is in some wonderland like when he meets with his sister it gives you a hint into his past but doesn't much dig into it as our character himself doesn't much care about it or another instance when takashi left the job movie depicts hirayama irritated by it 
as he has to do his shift too. By doing this, film not only humanizes his character but also depicts that the life he lives was a choice he had made. You know, his sister asked him that, do you really clean toilets? Again, this is just my personal interpretation. As I just said that this movie is like a photograph. In normal gazette, it suggests that it is very simple, but it is quite complex because of its interpretive nature, as it is not bound by a strict definitive narrative. Last year, a scene that has impacted me in a great deal as a filmmaker was this scene from Selin Song's Past Lives, where Hae Sung walks out of the school and Na Young walks alongside him. The context of the scene is that Hae Sung just discovered that Na Young is moving to Canada and it's his last day of seeing her. In the shot, there is no music or dialogues, just the two characters walking silently. It feels as if director Song has captured a authentic moment in their lives. The reason why I was so moved by this scene is that it doesn't tell you what to feel or think. Still, it translates the feeling, which is again very interpretive. And this is not the only time. I had a similar experience while watching Woody Allen's Manhattan when this shot arrived. It is a similar shot. The four characters are in a stable frame watching movie. This is actually kind of a funny shot. The context is that this guy is married to that woman sitting next to him and Diana Keaton's character is with Woody Allen. But this guy was in an extramarital affair with Diana Keaton's character which doesn't work out because obviously he was married. And then Woody Allen's character and Diana Keaton's character started dating and Woody Allen's character knows everything about it as his character and this guy is best friend. So basically it's a mess and this simple shot portrays it. The commonality in these shots is that they doesn't have any dialogues or music to suggest what to perceive. What they have is a history. Remember the context that I gave you. So what happened is that based on people's personal understanding of the story, they perceive this differently because people's interpretation is based on their personal experience of life. That's why such visuals connects with them deeply. Because you know, even though it looks like just two kids walking with each other, but there is so much that's happening in this little moment. One can give meaning to every gesture or every little thing that happen. Perfect Days in itself feels like a long such shot. Movie doesn't have any unnecessary dialogues or background score. Whatever music one hears is either sung or played by characters. Beside the absence of strict narrative, the absence of music and dialogues makes it complex and layered like a deep ocean. So clearly I am suggesting that dialogues and music are definitive tools. Simply because that's how most of the filmmakers use them. A conventional filmmaker will use background score to build a mood. Basically, he's telling you what to feel in that particular moment. Similarly, dialogues are also used in the similar context. But again, this doesn't mean that one can't use these tools creatively. It totally depends on the character and nature of your script. Like one of my all-time favorite film is Ingmar Bergman's Autumn Sonata. More than a half of time, the film is just mother and daughter talking to each other. But Bergman was a master of this craft. He himself was a theatre director, so he knew the importance of subtext and how little gestures and expressions add ambiguity and realism to speech. But more importantly, Perfect Days is a very different kind of film directed by a very different kind of filmmaker. So the absence of music and sound serves best to the world of the film. The shot from past lives, I said that it feels like a genuine moment in time. But as we know, it's not truly genuine. The actors are acting, there must be rehearsals and takes, the people in the background are extras and that's how you make a movie. 
but we still hope that it should have been genuine. Wim Wenders is a filmmaker who takes this whole thing quite seriously. He said that when he was starting out as a filmmaker, it was really hard for him to say cut because he believed that what he was shooting is a continuous moment in time and he is not allowed to say cut. As a result, the average length of a shot in his movies were of 4 minutes because until the movie reel ends, the shot used to continue. He also believed that a filmmaker should respect the flow of time and must shoot the film from start to the end. But you know, from economic point of view, these are radical approaches and he has to tone down in order to survive as a filmmaker. But this importance and urge to have authenticity never fade away from his films. When one watch Perfect Days, the thing that consciously, unconsciously strike the chords is the authenticity. Wim Wenders has used quite intimate ratio which is not common in today's time. Besides for the outdoor shots, he has relied on the available light. Most interesting of all is Wim Wenders requested Koji Yakusho, actor who played Hirayama to shoot his rehearsals. He first hesitated but then he let him shoot. So the acting of Yokusho is without rehearsals. Besides they shot this entire movie in just 17 days. So this spontaneity, natural lighting and handheld camera shots adds the authenticity to the world of perfect days. In a nutshell, the absence of strict narrative, background score and unnecessary dialogues makes perfect days more interpretive. Movie refrains from telling people what to think or feel, rather it chooses to depict things in more naturalistic way, translating the nuances of day-to-day -day life. It also gives us a glimpse into Wim Wenders directing priorities as an artist. The cinematography further exemplifies his vision with spontaneous shooting, handheld camera shots and the use of available light. Perfect Days is a perfect movie, at least that's how I like to see it. So that's all I had to say. I hope I didn't bore you because I'm aware that I'm not yet quite comfortable with talking with the camera, but I think I will get better. So that's all. See you in the next video then. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.